Hello DC fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We were supposed to right now be all insanely hyped. I probably would have taken my shirt off and started twerking for y'all. Ain't gonna happen now. <laughs> but man, we should have not have gotten our hopes up even though a credible actual news station like Deadline was saying there might have been an appearance from Henry Cavill as Superman at Comic-Con. He in fact did not show up. However, Dwayne Johnson did answer a question about Superman that lets us know the current state of where DC is with the Superman character and it's honestly a little disappointing, but that won't be the only thing we'll talk about here. We'll break down the full panel involved with DC, talking about the footage they shown for Shazam Fury of the Gods and the footage they showed for Black Adam. Cause Superman announcement or not, these two movies look like a lot of fun. I really like what they showed off, but I'm gonna need to hear from you guys down below. What trailer got you the most hype? Are you excited for Shazam or Black Adam? What do you think these details said by Dwayne Johnson hint to for the future of Superman? Also, just make sure you're checking up on the channel for when I cover the Marvel panel and we're supposed to get a trailer for the Chucky series, so I'm gonna be talking about both. All right, so first things first, DC started off their panel with talking about Shazam Fury of the Gods and then premiered a longer version of the trailer than we had already gotten. And really, I love this trailer. It looks like so much fun, which is what the Shazam character should be using that Eminem song was also a really great choice breaking down some of the key highlight moments is I thought it was so interesting how they started off the trailer with Shazam mentioning all these other DC characters like they brought up Ezra Miller's the flash they use very specific footage to make sure you would not see his face I found that kind of interesting of course Aquaman played by Jason Momoa and Ben Affleck's Batman so this kind of lets you know this is pre the flash time separation whatever is going on there because after the flash movie a whole new DCEU will be set up so this is kind of before that and it's just always nice when DC acknowledges Ben Affleck's Batman because the boy deserves some respect but it looks like the movie will be dealing with Billy Batson kind of struggling with the idea of being a superhero he's kind of got this fraud mentality that he's not a real superhero because he's technically a kid who just turns into one and it even sounds like his siblings who he gave Shazam powers to are also kind of separating and trying to do their own thing which I think will make for an interesting dynamic throughout the movie the other thing I really liked about the trailer for Shazam 2 it let us know they're going to be diving more into the Greek mythology that the Shazam powers are based off of because as you know his name is an acronym for every Greek character that he takes a little bit of power from wisdom of solomon strength of hercules stamina of atlas power of zeus courage of achilles and speed of mercury and well specifically here it looks like the daughters of atlas the a in shazam are coming in to want that power back this leads me to my theory with shazam that they're most likely going to take away the powers from the other siblings while i thought it was cool that they get it and they introduce the shazam family it is true it takes a little bit away from the main shazam character billy batson if his siblings kind of have a little bit of his powers too so maybe him just sharing that ability with all these characters is just not right so by the end of the movie it'll just be billy batson who can be the only one to become shazam i also love how david f sandberg's continuing the tradition of putting in annabelle in the dc movies if you don't know david f sandberg directed the movie annabelle creation my favorite annabelle movie so he added annabelle in the first shazam movie and now here in the second one and then james wan who made aquaman and the conjuring also puts annabelle in his movie movies and I'm sure we're gonna get an appearance in Aquaman 2. Kind of like the Pizza Planet truck of the DC movies now. Also not that it really matters that much but still kind of cool to find in the background. Two teddy bears here, one dressed up as Robin and the other one is Green Lantern. Since this is pre-Flash right now going off the Snyder mythology, Robin is dead so kind of interesting that a child doctor would have a dead superhero as a teddy bear. And Green Lantern it's still up in the air whether we even have a Hal Jordan version or even a Jon Stewart in this current DCEU this might just be them knowing Green Lanterns exist. And speaking of things Hollywood is just doing a lot of inserting Fast and Furious jokes into their media. I swear this has got to be like the fifth Fast and Furious joke that was inserted into a popular show or movie. Nothing's really wrong with it, but I think it's starting to get overplayed, but still kind of funny. In the end, really like the Shazam trailer. Think it's going in the right direction. A lot of heart, a lot of fun. I'm on board for this. From there, the panel moved over to talk about Black Adam, where Dwayne Johnson shows up dressed as Black Adam. You gotta appreciate the dedication Dwayne Johnson took to show up in costume even though I found it so funny that as soon as he was done with that he runs backstage changes and then comes back because big buff man Dwayne Johnson ain't gonna sit in a superhero costume all panel but then we were also treated to a sneak peek at Black Adam with about a minute long trailer here that just continues to show me that this movie just looks like a lot of fun and so cool during the comic-con panel they mentioned if Black Adam is a success and people like the Justice Society of America they would not be against making spin-offs and other movies with just them and from the little 
little bits of the Just Society of America in here. They look awesome. Like this one scene with Dr. Fate fighting off Black Adam and kind of doing this multiplying effect. That looks so cool. Cyclone was also given a little bit of spotlight in here. She looks great. We see a little bit of Noah Centineo unmasked. It said that him as Adam Smasher and Cyclone are kind of like the new members of the team and are just learning how to be superheroes. But I think the thing I found the most cool and I got hyped for is just this little tease of Hawkman fighting off Black Adam because that looks awesome. Just him almost taking a swing at him and then being stopped by Black Adam. Like I feel like this movie is going to please a lot of people. They're still kind of hiding the villain character that we're set to get that's already been released through merchandise but still just really curious how this will fit into the DCEU and what this will mean for them going forward because Dwayne Johnson did say that this movie kind of ushers in a new era of the DCEU so this is part of their plans for the future other than just the Flash. But then it brought us to the burning question the thing that we were hoping for we're like all right man how, how about you answer some superman questions some fan got on stage and asked dwayne johnson who would win in a fight black adam and superman and this is what dwayne johnson had to say well i, I will say as you guys know because we're all in deep with this mythology and it's been the age-old question of who would win a in a fight between black adam and superman uh pound for pound they're pretty close um I guess it probably all depends on who's playing Superman. I will just say that. <laughs> so I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave it at that. I will leave it at that. And um, we'll just go with that one. That right there, my friend, should basically let you know, as of this moment right now, DC just does not have their stuff figured out when it comes to Superman. But there is... A smidgen of hope because look it's just been conflicting report after conflicting report for the past couple of months it is either Henry Cavill is back he's not back they're rebooting him they're doing black Superman and especially since Warner Brother just had a change in ownership with Discovery like they are trying to figure stuff out but it looks like they have not gotten Henry Cavill locked in there's always been these rumors going around that Henry Cavill is just demanding too high of a salary which I know as superhero fans are just like well give him the money man he deserves it he's Superman we also have to remember his men of Steel movie didn't perform as well as they wanted kind of letting them know is his Superman desire we know he is and we'd love to see him back but that seems to be the main issue and then also doesn't look like they're doing the black Superman story anymore when discovery came in there was an article that came out that they want to do just the classic iconic superhero characters the ones that actually make money like Batman the Joker and not do some of these lesser known characters that they could do those at another time which is why they canceled the Wonder Twins movie and that just lets me know then the most iconic version of Superman and the most well-known is white Caucasian Clark Kent. Either way, it sucks that we're just going to continue to stay in the dark and we just have no idea what the future is. We're going to continue to get articles that say, oh, rumors that Henry Cavill's back. Oh, no, looks like they're rebooting things and we're just going to be on this roller coaster for a long time. I throw it off to you guys, though. You saw all this stuff that was released during the DC panel at Comic-Con. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? Any thoughts for the future of Superman? Don't be forgetting to stay tuned on the channel for more coverage of Comic-Con. As always, my name is Chris. Take care.